So, here is one more popular problem which I think is very frequently asked in one dimensional motion. I think you must have always seen the problem based on finding the average velocity and the average speed. They are the very popular ones. So, first I would like to let you know that there is a difference between average velocity and average speed. Average velocity is displacement divided by time taken whereas, average speed is distance traveled divided by time taken. So, the small difference that you notice in the formula there is in the numerator for the average velocity there is displacement and in the numerator for the average speed there is distance both are clearly different. So, we can always ask you one interesting question connected with this formula alone like can distance be the magnitude of the displacement for which your answer is supposed to be may be or may not be ok. So, when is it going to be may be if a particle is travelling in a straight line and it does not return to the starting point then the distance and the displacement are going to be identical and in that case the magnitude of the average velocity can be the average speed. Whereas, if a particle is travelling in a zigzag manner then or it is going to travel in a straight line, but returns at some point of time then the magnitude of the velocity is not going to be the speed or the magnitude of the displacement is not going to be the distance and therefore, in that case you will have to be very very careful average speed is going to be different average velocity is going to be different ok. Now, coming to this problem let me read it first for you a body of mass m moving along a straight line covers half the distance with 2 meters per second speed and the remaining distance is covered in two equal intervals of time with speed 3 meters per second and 5 meters per second and he has asked you to find out the average speed for the whole journey and the options given are like this 8 by 3 meters per second, 4 by 3 meters per second, 16 by 3, 3 by 8 right. So, those are the options given. So, what we will do here is first divide the whole distance into two parts right two equal parts. So, let us call the first distance to be s and the second distance to be also s. What is the speed with which you have covered the first half of the distance 2 meters per second. So, what I will do here is use the distance and the speed to find out the time I must have taken. Therefore, t 1 will be equal to s that I have covered with 2 meters per second. So, this will give me in seconds right ok. Now, what I will do is I will divide the second time that I must have taken for my journey into two equal parts. So, let me first presume that the total time I must have taken for the second journey is 2 t out of which t and t are going to be the divisions. So, the first time is covered with a speed of 3 meters per second. So, I know the time I know the speed. So, I can always calculate the distance I might have traveled. So, that is distance is equal to speed into time. So, speed is 3 meters per second and time that I have considered is t. Similarly, during the second equal interval of time my speed has been 5 therefore, the distance I might have covered should be 5 into t. So, what is the total distance I might have covered there? It should be s equals s 1 plus s 2 which is nothing but 3 t plus 5 t that is the distance I have covered. So, that makes it 8 t and therefore, t will be equal to s divided by 8 and I hope you agree here that having added s 1 and s 2 I have equated it to s because we had divided the whole journey initially into two equal parts the first part was s and the second part was also s therefore, s 1 plus s 2 should give you s and t will be equal to s by 8. What is this t? t is the one of the intervals one of the equal intervals that I must have taken to cover the second half of the journey ok. So, now I know the total time and I know the distance. So, I can always get the average speed by the formula distance traveled divided by time taken. So, average velocity or average speed equal to average speed equal to total distance traveled which is nothing but 2 s and divided by total time taken which is s by 2 plus s by 8 plus one more s by 8 that is s by 4. I hope you agree with this because s by 8 is only one interval of time and there were two such equal intervals therefore, it is s by 4. Now, if you add these two I think you will get 4 will be the LCM in the denominator. So, that makes it 
8s in the numerator and then 2s plus s will be 3s. So, s gets cancelled and the answer is going to be 8 by 3 meters per second and that makes the first option that is A option perfectly correct. So, that was the method that you saw just now which I believe may be slightly longer for you people, but there is a shortcut method also which is suggested by some good professors here and that would be like see say uh, see here the first distance you have covered is with 2 meters per second and the two more distances that you have covered are 3 and 5. So, your answer should not be less than 2 and cannot be more than 5 and therefore, you can straight away rule out some of the options there. Like if you look at the D option which is 3 by 8 meters per second works out to be something less than 1 even and we do not want our answer to be less than 2 therefore, that is ruled out. And if you check the value of C option which is 16 by 3 that turns out to be more than 5 even. So, that is also straight away wrong and then 4 by 3 that is also slightly more than 1, but less than 2 as we do not want the answer. So, only the first option that is A option which is 8 by 3 there works out to be perfectly correct. So, without doing all those lengthy calculations or getting into the true formula there, I think you can straight away pick up the answer A which is 8 by 3 meters per second. questions from a two dimensional motion. What I mean is projectile motion, but I would love to again share a couple of things associated with projectile motion with you people. One among them is see what exactly is the difference between the problems in 1D and 2D that you are going to notice is whenever you projected the particle vertically upwards or you projected the particle vertically downwards in 1D, the angle between the velocity and acceleration that is acceleration due to gravity was either 0 or 180 degree. Had you projected the particle vertically upwards, velocity was upwards, acceleration due to gravity was downwards and therefore, the angle was 180 degree. When you projected the particle vertically downwards say from some building, then the velocity was downwards and the acceleration due to gravity was of course, downwards and therefore, the angle between velocity and acceleration in that case had become 0. Now, the angle between velocity and acceleration in case of a projectile motion that you are going to notice is neither 0 nor 180 degree. It is going to be something between 0 and 180 degree. That is when you can say a projectile will happen right and then we have formula for maximum height as u square sin square theta divided by 2 g range of the projectile formula is uh, u square sin 2 theta by g and the time of flight formula is 2u sin theta by g and so and so forth. So, even if you directly remember the formula also, you can solve a couple of simple problems or substitution type of problems. Okay. Now, let me read the present one which I have written there on the board and see how we can solve that. The maximum height attained by the projectile when thrown at an angle theta with the horizontal is half the range, find the value of theta. See, that is the condition that he has given. He wants the maximum height to be half the range bus that is his requirement. So, fulfilling that requirement what could be the angle of projection is to be found one of the options has to be selected. So, what I will do now is I will write the maximum height make it equal to half the range. Okay. What is the formula for maximum height? Maximum height is u square sin square theta divided by 2 g and what is the formula for range? Range is u square sin 2 theta divided by g, but he wants maximum height to be half of the range. So, what I will do here is I will just write u square sin square theta divided by 2 g is equal to u square sin 2 theta divided by 2 g. So, did you understand why did I write 2 g here? Because he does not want these two to be equal, he wants maximum height to be half of the range. So, now 2 g gets cancelled, u square gets cancelled among sin square theta you can cancel one sin theta which is present here, but I hope you remember the expansion of sin 2 theta. Sin 2 theta can be expanded as 2 sin theta cos theta out of which one sin theta gets cancelled and what is left behind is only one sin theta is equal to uh, 2 cos theta right. So, then you get tan theta equal to 2 
and that makes theta equal to tan inverse of 2 and that makes the first option or the A option perfectly correct. So, A is the correct option. Mm -hmm.